All right, everyone, welcome back to their Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video with Fat Phil. We've got a lot of news to talk about today. We got Capital Games kind of responding to the GC Omicron that they released for Phalanx and their attempt to explain it. It's pathetic. We've also got news of bonus drops coming to the Cantina. And from that, we're going to transition into why I think there's a cast system that is developed in Galaxy of Heroes. So we're going to talk about all that, guys. So go ahead, like and subscribe, comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Let's get into this beautiful intro from Moonborn here. All right, guys, I freaking love that thing so much. So let's flip over first and i want to talk about the bonus drops coming into the cantina so a lot of you when you came into the game you got a newsletter and i was super excited when i got this so i popped open the newsletter and it's like hey mark 7 chirotech shock prods are available in the cantina right and that's from you know tomorrow at the time of recording so april 12th all the way through april 17th which is awesome and i was like man that is so good but i was like i want to see the official you know forums before i like talk about this and then I saw in the actual, like, uh, Swago event server, right, from Sig Sig, that it's actually not as good as it sounds. So, yes, I will be getting Kyrotex, but there's also the, what's kind of left out is that they're going to be dropping Marin as well. But you need, if you have a seven-star Marin, you get to earn Kyrotex. Otherwise, you're going to earn Marin in Cantina. And I feel like this is kind of a, I don't know. I think it's good because Marin's obviously a great character. You need her for Jedi Knight Calcastus. But I feel like the Kyrotex should just drop. Like, I don't know. I, I'm not. I think that it sounds great. Like, I'm so excited that I get Kyrotech. But this is just kind of exacerbating this gap between the top end players and the bottom players. And we're going to get a little bit more into that. Uh, but I did want to share this first right away that yes. You can be earning more Kyrotex if you have a 7-star Marin. And that kind of, you know, re-emphasizes the importance of Jedi Knight Cal Kestis. But, let's go over and I want to talk about some of the stuff that we got from the developers. Where they were kind of talking about, um, you know, the Galactic Challenge Omicron. And kind of, you know, defending it, if you will. So, here it is. Let's move my fat face up to the corner here. So, some of their stuff here. We wanted to try something new. I, I have a feeling that the reason they made this is because we were like, we don't want Conquest. Um, it's more of a niche Omicron. No friggin' duh, it's a niche Omicron. And targeted to players that may want some extra oomph with GCs. Like, I don't know. Um, with five gun Gungans, we want to try to give each one an Omicron that affects a different game mode. And the lifetime of Omicrons, we'd explored only four modes up until now. Yes, because there's not that many game modes that actually warrant Omicrons. And I just want to say this, like... And they said, you know, will GCs be harder? They're inherently very in difficulty. The intent of the Omicron is to make the Gungan squad a viable alternative to completing feats that are difficult for your roster to accomplish otherwise. So the one thing I'll say here is that that could be nice if the if it's like, hey, debuffs and things like that. I could see that. But again, I feel like a lot of these GCs are going to be dependent on like just having the Gungan faction to get them done. That's just my, um, you know thought process and they said well there'll be another gungan this is the last of the gungan marquees the remaining one is jar jar the reason i think that's an important question the one thing they didn't note is whether or not the galactic challenges will be win with a full squad of gungans or win with four gungans if it's a full squad then this omicron like i said is garbage so i think they do need to answer that of how will those gcs be active like because if it's win with a full team of gungans don't equip the omicron at all so nobody should be equipping this omicron yet but I want to, so I want to just say that, and I want to share this meme, because I think this is so funny. This was uh, shared in my Discord server, so, GAC Omicrons, Territory War Omicrons, Territory Battle Omicrons, Raid Omicrons, Conquest, GC, like, that's just so true. <laughs> you know, and like, I I guess like, I can understand that they're probably running out of Omicrons to, to give in the game, but I don't know, I just, I, I can't stand this crap, right? It's kind of ticking me off. So we're going to flip over um, to the game again, right? Because I wanted to just kind of talk about this quote unquote cast system that's developed, right? So to describe what a cast system is, I went and I was Googling a bunch of definitions. And so I'm going to read this definition for you that I found. A cast system is an artificial construction. 
a fixed and embedded ranking of human value that sets the presumed supremacy of one group against the presumed inferiority of other groups on the basis of ancestry and often immutable traits, traits that would be neutral in the abstract but are ascribed life and death meaning in a hierarchy favoring the dominant caste whose forebears designed it. So that sounds like a lot of stuff, right? But think of that in terms of Galaxy of Heroes, that basically that is saying in layman's terms, we want to keep the top people at the top and the bottom people at the bottom. And Galaxy of Heroes is very much designed that way. Think about the, you know, Kyber One and the rewards that go with Kyber One compared to the rewards in Carbonite or the rewards in Erodium and Chromium. It is vastly different that you get far more for being at the top of the game. And you could say, well, how does that, you know, those traits is that I've got a larger roster. Outside of Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, that has no bearing on my life, right? I do not walk around in public and tell people that I am in Kyber One or that I am a 10 million, like nobody cares outside of Swago, right? Like, but you know, so in this moment here, because we're in this game, there's a cast system. Hey, the bigger guild you're in, the more rewards you're gonna get. Outside of Galaxy of Heroes, none of this matters. But because in here, there's so much value put onto it, it develops a caste system of, hey, you're at the top level, you're at the you know mid-level, right? And we always talk about it kind of with the phases of Swago, right? That's kind of what a caste system is, right? It's these phases of Swago, the beginning, the middle, the end. Those are all caste systems. So as we get in and we talk, and as I talked about those bonus drops that are coming to the cantina, the thing that I noticed is that it's again another character for Jedi Knight Cal Kestis that is get that is gating us through these rewards. When you think about the way that you know Zepho works, right? Where Zepho was, hey, you need Jedi Knight Cal Kestis. Well, this is not the first time that we've gotten additional rewards for a character that is required for uh, Jedi Knight Cal Kestis, right? There was other bonus drops and things. They're dropping Zetas, or you got the character shards. So while I love these drops of character shards. I think adding Kyratex adds a whole new meaning to them. Because um, I think for a lot of players in the game, particularly in the lower levels, Kyratex are something that they are constantly running out of. And adding character shards for Marin is great, but I think Kyratex would help them a lot more. And I think this is going to start trending into this game that it's again another you know sh show, I guess, that hey, we want you to farm the latest and greatest stuff. We want you to farm, you know, the newest things. And I want to show you guys something that I think really kind of paints this picture well. And that is right here. So the relic data for Swago.gg. Look at the amount of Jedi Knight Calcastus. Relic Jedi Knight Calcastus, there's 36,000 of them in the game right now. Look at Dr. Afra, 34,000. Dr. Afra has been in this game for a much longer period of time than Jedi Knight Calcastus, and yet there's more Calcastus. And I think this was Capital Games recognizing that when they add something that's not a galactic legend, they need to ensure that there's a reason to farm it. Think about Bo-Katan Mandalore. She's getting a bonus zone. Jar Jar, a raid character. Jedi Knight Calcastus, bonus zone. They want to make sure that there's incentive to farm that character. Because Dr. Afra, I think, was a lesson for them that, yeah, she's good, but I'd much rather have Calcastus. I'd much rather have Bo-Katan. I'd much even rather have Starkiller. Um, so I definitely think that's kind of, de you know, developing these casts of, Hey, if you have the newest stuff, you're going to get the best rewards. So me, I am 100% going to be going in the cantina. I'm already starting to bank some energy. And that kind of leads me to this next point here of, you know, where, um, you know, kind of finishing some updates, right? That the staff is now farmable in the cantina. I think this is a great, like, it's great that, Hey, it's in the cantina. I mean, it's on a 16 energy node. So, you know, let's pump, <laughs> let's pump the brakes a little bit you know, gosh. But um, the other thing here that I feel is problematic was that the character they replaced in the cantina, they moved to the Galactic War Star, which again, I, I, you know, I very much appreciate, but it was Night Sister Spirit. And this is a character that's just kind of, eh, you know, she's not really a Night Sister that you need anymore. You'd much rather have Marin or somebody else. And I think this is just, again, Capital Games kind of being a little bit tone deaf in the game. That why could you not put somebody here like Storm? Like even like, like you know, it'd be a great, you know, it would be great in there? Death Trooper, right? Death Trooper would be a fantastic character to put there. 
a character who is still, he's a pilot, a very good character inside of the Iden team, Imperial Remnants, but not someone that you're going to go in the cantina and go out of your way to farm him early on. But you put him in the Galactic War store, and that could be, like, I just, I, I felt like replacing Night Sister Spirit was a eh, kind of move. So, Stap is there. And again, I think this kind of reinforces this whole, like, cast system. That for those of us who are in the position where, like, we're going to farm this guy right away. Like, I would not be farming Stap until you know exactly what the requirements are for this raid. Somebody like myself, where I've got signal data, right? I know I'm going to get this guy regardless. I'm going to be farming him immediately. And with those Kyrotech coming to the game, I'm going to be putting 200 crystal refreshes into the staff for those five days because I know that even if I don't get as many staff shards to make up for the shipment cost, I'm going to get Kyrotech to offset that. So, you know, I'm very excited for that. It's great for me. I think for a lot of other players, that's a bad feeling. But this kind of wraps all up, you know, kind of talking about this cast and hey, you know, is that everybody in this game needs something different right now. Everybody in this game has different needs that if you're a new player, you need this. If you're in the mid game, you need, you know, hey, there's, I just need shards. I need gear. I need Zetas. I need Kyrotech. I need signal data. I need, you know, whatever. And then you have those players at the very top of the game who are just like their bottleneck at that tippy top of the spear is I need capital games to release more packs. And I'm not at all judging them for like, they are, they have the disposable income to spend. And that is, they are keeping this game afloat. But that's truly their bottleneck is there's not another pack for, that, for me to buy. So everybody kind of has these different needs. And when you think back through all these different gear economy changes, all the economy changes with the double drops of shards, increasing core gear, like those kind of changes made, you know, a lot, uh, made the game a lot, you know, move a lot smoother. But when you think about what the next change they would do, it's very difficult because everybody's got such different needs. If you increase Kyrotech, okay, gear 13 is a bottleneck. You increase the gear 13, and for some of you, that's great. But then all that does for players at like Arnold's level and above that, right? Those guys, that's just additional relic salvage for them. So now that gap kind of grows even more because you didn't increase the signal data, which they don't really need as much of because they're just going from relic 8 to relic 9. So you kind of made their life significantly easier and everybody else is kind of like, well, I don't have the Kyra tech, so the gear 13 doesn't matter to me. Um, and then you're like, oh, well, I have all these impulse detectors, but I have no signal data to use them. Um, so as I was thinking through, hey, what change could they make? And like, can't just do the Kyra tech, right? Because then you run out of gear 13, can't do gear 13 because you don't have enough Kyra tech. You can't just do relic materials because then you run into the signal data problem. And as I was thinking, I was like, man, signal data would be a really good idea. But you have to be careful because you can't make it so easy. And so what I thought of is that I think the next frontier for them that would help all casts of the game is if they took and made it easier to get to Relic 3, right? This would be the next economy change. Carbonite circuit boards, bronzium wiring, and maybe like your white and a little bit of green signal data. You don't need to do anything crazy. Even if it was just putting these in the store for you know you could buy these with like your mark two or mark three raid currency i think the next great frontier for capital games is figuring out a way to get players into farming more and more blue signal data see when they changed the core gear when they changed the when they did the core gear change what that really did is it allowed us like i think what players don't always you know quite understand right was that the core gear change what it really did is that it allowed players like myself and others that I didn't need to go and buy these in every single store. Like I was spending so much of my resources just trying to get these things that you couldn't even worry about Kyrotech, right? Kyrotech never even entered my my brain half the time because you were just so focused on getting the core gear. So what that core gear change did is it shifted your focus to the bottleneck of Kyrotechs, right? And that way core gear kind of is an afterthought that as long as you're kind of not crushing through all these different farms at once your core gear will kind of keep pace with your chirotech just naturally i think they could do the same thing with the signal data see i don't want them to increase chirotechs and gear 13 because i think that has adverse consequences from a signal data perspective where that's going to get even worse but i think if you made it a little bit easier to get carbonite circuit boards bronzium wiring and signal data it helps everybody 
For those of you in the earlier stages of the game, that's more time that you can spend on the blue signal data and those relic pieces that are harder to obtain, like Electrum Conductors, Zimbital Cards. For players at the end game, a lot of them are constantly running out of Carbonite Circuit Boards and Bronzian Wiring. So, hey, you don't need to worry about those anymore. Hey, you don't need to worry about getting the white and the green signal data. Just go and focus on trying to obtain the blue signal data. And when I say don't worry about it, it's not like you don't farm it at all. But I think of the amount of days I've spent where I haven't even been able to farm blue signal data because I need to get so much of this stuff to even get to the point where this is my big priority. So... I know I threw a lot at you guys today, kind of covered a bunch of different topics, but I do think that is important to understand, right? This cast system that is developed and that CG kind of is struggling to find ways to reward and increase the, you know, it, like find the ways to change the economy for all levels of the game because everybody's needs are so different. And that's why I think that initial relics, like up to relic three, making that journey a little bit less painful would really go a long way. You don't get into Rise of the Empire with that, but you can unlock some data crons, but I think it just opens up the door to make everybody's life a little bit easier. Let me know your guys' thoughts. Do you see this cast that I'm talking about that they kind of make sure that the top players stay at the top and the bottom players stay at the bottom? What do you think of these Galactic Challenge Omicrons? How do you feel about the bonus drops? I want to hear from you guys. Let me know. I love you all. May the force be with you, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, my friends.